What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on with another review in my Nicolas Cage Birthday Month series. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to the Cage Man! Happy birthday to you! In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the 2000 action film, Gone in 60 Seconds. So Gone in 60 Seconds was released in 2000. The film was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, who produced a lot of over-the-top action films, his heyday being in the 90s and 2000s and even produced some other action movies that also starred Nicolas Cage, including Con Air, The Rock, National Treasure, and The Sorcerer's Apprentice, just to name a few. Gone in 60 Seconds was actually a remake of a low-budget action film from 1974. This is the big budget Hollywood blockbuster version of the film, and had I had known that this was a remake, I would have seeked the original out first, but this was actually a last minute addition for Nicolas Cage Month. I originally had set to do the David Lynch directed film, Wild at Heart, but that movie was impossibly hard to find. I couldn't find it on any streaming services anywhere. I couldn't find it on Amazon to rent, so Gone in 60 Seconds was a last minute replacement. The movie was met with negative reviews. I saw it has a 26% on Rotten Tomatoes after watching the film. So how is Gone in 60 Seconds? Is it as bad as what the critics say? Is it a hidden gem or is it somewhere in between? Let's find out together. Upon learning that he has to come out of retirement to steal 50 cars in one night to save his brother's life, Former car thief Randall Memphis Reigns enlists help from a few boost happy pals to accomplish a seemingly impossible feat. From countless car chases to relentless cops, the high octane excitement builds as Randall swerves around more than a few blocks to keep his brother Kip alive. And this movie stars an all star cast including Nicolas Cage, Giovanni Ribsey. Angelina Jolie, William Lee Scott, Scott Kahn, James Duvall, Will Patton, Delroy Lindo, Timothy Oliphant, Chi McBride, Robert Duvall, Christopher Eccleston, and Vinny Jones. So one thing I have to give Gone in 60 Seconds credit is, is the initial premise is actually pretty good. It's got an impossible task where Nicholas Cage's character, Memphis, he has to come out of retirement, he's a former car thief, and he has to do this impossible task to steal 50 cars in one night to give to this crime boss to save his brother's life who's in a lot of deep debt. I do like the initial setup, and there is some exciting action sequences throughout, especially in the second half when the heist starts to kick in and we get some very exciting car chases, we got some cool fist fights, there's also some witty banter between some of the characters, and there are some entertaining aspects of this film. What holds it back though is that the script itself is actually pretty weak. There's so many sequences of exposition throughout the film that drags the movie and scenes that should have been extremely exciting because the movie's building up to this crazy heist, awesome car chases, practical stunts, maybe some ludicrous stunts thrown in along the way that would inspire the Fast and Furious franchise, but there's a lot of exposition in between and it grinds the pacing to a halt. Also, as much as I love the cast in this movie, there are some great actors that are involved in this film. I mean, you got Nicolas Cage, you got Angelina Jolie, you got Delroy Lindo, you got Robert Duvall, you got Christopher Eccleston, you even got Timothy Oliphant in this movie, which was pretty cool to see. But all of these characters are very one-dimensional and forgettable. Nicolas Cage is obviously the scene stealer, as he usually is the scene stealer 
in any movie that he's in. And there are a couple moments where you get to see that Nicolas Cage charm. But what disappointed me here is he's a lot more reserved in this film compared to some other Nicolas Cage action films. Compare Gone in 60 Seconds with something like Con Air or The Rock where he got a lot more free reign and he does a lot of insane stuff in insane ludicrous action films. And those movies are far more memorable than something like Gone in 60 Seconds where the thing I remember the most about the film is the car chase near the end which was very exciting, incredibly shot, was very high octane throughout and it harkened back to some of the classic car chases that blew a lot of people's minds back during like the late golden age into new Hollywood filmmaking. Kind of similar to movies like Bullet and Smokey and the Bandit which had some ridiculously entertaining chase sequences. This was a fun movie that had some entertaining moments. I'd give it a higher grade if I was invested in the characters a lot more and that's what held it back for me. I didn't care for a lot of the characters and the script itself was pretty weak with a lot of dull expository sequences to build the plot along. I think if it had focused more on the ensemble cast and the insane action sequences. I would enjoy this as much as some of the best of the Fast and Furious movies. But overall, this is a movie that it is entertaining, but the end result is a bit of a mixed bag. A lot of the actors feel really wasted in this. Like, I will forget Angelina Jolie is in this movie whenever I do decide to rewatch this film because she leaves little impact in this film and the hair they decide to do for her character. I don't know if she was wearing a wig or she dyed her hair blonde, but whoever designed that should be fired. That was an awful decision, what they did with Angelina Jolie's hair. It is so bad. Overall, this is a movie, like I said, there's enjoyment to be had, but it's not one I'm going to remember anytime soon. But I do think it's not worth the 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes especially because of how well directed and produced the action sequences are and there are some fun entertainment action to be had and I bet if I had seen this like if I was like 13 years old this would have been one of my favorite movies of all time I probably would have had a lot of nostalgia for it and it'd be more of a guilty pleasure type thing I, I can see that if 13 or 14 year old me saw Gone in 60 Seconds. But overall, this movie is not bad. I'm willing to revisit it every once in a while and there's some occasional fun moments in there, but between the weak script, the forgettable characters, and lack of crazy, crazy Nicolas Cage moments, this is a weaker film in his filmography. Not the worst thing I've seen Nicolas Cage in, but this movie is a bit of a mess and a bit of a mixed bag in general and I think it'll be forgotten about over time unfortunately. So unfortunately I'm gonna give Gone in 60 Seconds a 3 out of 5 stars and on the 100 point scale it's getting a 54 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Gone in 60 Seconds as part of my Nicolas Cage birthday month celebration reviewing different Nicolas Cage films throughout the month of January to celebrate Nicolas Cage's birthday. I plan on doing this series throughout the entirety of 2021 celebrating the birthdays of different actors. I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can check out the other Nicolas Cage reviews I've done so far as this series is slowly starting to grow. And if you've seen Gone in 60 Seconds, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews ranking videos and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless and I will see you next time. Okay, let's ride.